Yes, I think we can begin. Yeah, because uh, principal sir is busy right now. Okay. And uh, yesterday I invited Sasha, ma'am. Right now she is not picking up the phone. I have uh, given reminder. Okay, I think we will start. Yes. Hello, Mahajan, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, we will uh, start with the recording also. Yeah, yeah. no problem. I've already started. Sir, so you can begin. Yeah. Uh, so that alone, you can start. I'm going to start. Hello, Rutuja, are you there? Yeah, you can begin. Okay, ma'am. Okay. A very good and very warm good. to respected teachers and everyone assembled here. I am Rutuja Pawar from T Electrical. Uh, I am Satnu from T Electrical. I am Yashudi Poor from T Electrical. We welcome you all to this event, Coffee and Conversation, organized by Alumni Association and Electrical Engineering Department. Now, I kindly request Sujata Paunikar, ma'am, to formally welcome and introduce our alumnus, Mr. Anikesh. Thank you, Ratija. Good morning, everyone. I, Sujata Paunikar, Alumni Coordinator, Electrical Department. Welcome you all for today's event, Coffee and Conversation with Alminus, Mr. Aniket Samir. It gives immense pleasure to welcome Ms. Uh, Media Head, AISSM Society, all the HODs, faculties, and dear students. Thank you for joining this event. I am profoundly delighted to take this opportunity to introduce and welcome the Alminus speaker. Mr. Aniket Samir is alumnus of the Electrical Engineering Department. He had completed his Master's of Engineering in 2013. He had completed his Master's in 2018 from United States. Mr. Aniket is currently working as an embedded software engineer at Toyota Motors, Texas, US. Dear audience, this coffee and conversation will be joyful ride through some moments of experiences, memories, great passion, and opportunities. We are going to conduct two rounds of the digital So we welcome our prominent alumnus, former GS. We love to be Anikir. I request Rutuja to proceed with this session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your warm welcome. Now, let's kick start with our first round. That is the question answer session with Mr. Aniket. Thank you, Rutuja. Good morning, everyone. So the first question goes like this. Please tell us briefly about your career journey till today. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so before we start with the question answers, I think uh, at least uh, the host which uh, the, or the students who are asking me questions, if you could turn on your video, at least that would be great. So I know whom I'm talking to and whom I'm in conversation with. If you don't mind, of course, uh, or if you're in a difficult situation, I, I won't uh, force you to. But it would be great to uh, see faces on the screen and, and just uh, have a, a conversation that way. So yeah, my journey till today, uh, it has been an amazing and, and very, very exciting journey. Uh, I am basically from Nasik, Maharashtra. I came to Pune for my engineering. Uh, then four years were in AISSMS IOIT. Uh, I was in electrical department uh, and uh, I've been doing a lot of things apart from academics. I mean not a lot of things. I've been doing almost everything in addition to academics. Um, 
I it, it's not that uh, or it was never that I did not love studying or or I did not like it. I always liked studying as well, but I was not too much of a bookish person. So I I wanted to uh, do everything hands on and wanted to try it out myself. So right from the first year, I was uh, one of the very good students in um, you know the workshop uh, that we have uh, welding. Uh, I, I could do very well. Uh, I remember uh, in my batch, I think I was one of the students who did the welding of almost my entire batch because uh, I liked it so much and they did not want to do it. So uh, anything that was hands on, I loved it. And uh, books obviously gave me uh, the knowledge and the way and the path to study more. But yeah, apart from studying, I participated in sports. Uh, I participated in cultural activities and technical activities. Uh, I participated in uh, intra-department activities, intercollegiate activities, uh, debates, plays, theater. Uh, in my engineering, uh, in my fourth year, I also got an opportunity to act in a Marathi movie. So everything that I could do, I, I tried to do uh, in, in my engineering. And those were like really, really amazing uh, days. I was uh, in, in my second year, I was a joint GS of electrical department. In my uh, third year and final year, I was a GS of electrical department. And then in my final year, I was also the GS of the college. So got an opportunity to uh, start Alacrity of what it is today. So I was one of the founding members of Alacrity, you can say. Uh, in the initial uh, years, uh, initial first two years, it was known as Alacrity and Zenith. So an Alacrity was the cultural part, Zenith was the technical part. Uh, and later on, it, it just became alacrity. So that was that. Uh, I was also one of the uh, founding members of our college band at that time. Our college did not have a band. I call it, our college did not have a culture cutter. Uh, and and we were a bunch of people who, who started everything in the college. So it was immense fun, great learning, amazing opportunity, lifetime of friends and whatnot. Uh, after I graduated, uh, I got I got placed through the campus, so that was I guess lucky and a, and a bit of hard work and uh, all the learning that I got through all, doing all these things in college. Uh, so yeah, I got placed through campus. Uh, first year uh, in in my job, I worked in Mumbai for one year, uh, and then later two years I got transferred in the same company to the Pune branch. So I worked for two years in Pune, and. Um, the job was getting very monotonous and kind of boring and I always wanted to do something more. Uh, and it is kind of difficult to switch fields in India if, if you're not, uh, if you don't have the experience and you just go and ask for a job in that particular field, even if you like it, uh, people are not going to entertain you, right? So that's when I decided that I uh, want to do my master's and I came to US in 2016. So 2013 to 2016, I worked for three years. Uh, in 2016, I came to US. Uh, of course, having an electrical engineering background, uh, I wanted to study power systems here, but I was always very much interested and inclined in cars, uh, as, as I think most of the guys are cars and bikes. So that uh, gave me an uh, in electrical engineering over here in Michigan Technological University uh, gave me an opportunity to uh, pursue two different directions. Was for, one was power systems, so half of the credits for my entire MS I took for power systems, half of the credits I took for automotive controls, and I learned subjects like uh, automotive control systems, distributed embedded control systems, uh, electrical vehicles one, electrical vehicles two, fuel cells, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That was also a lot of fun, a lot of learning. Uh, initially in the first two subjects, I kind of scored very less because all the mechanical concepts were, were kind of very difficult for me to understand directly at a master's level, right? I did not I did not have any background or mechanical uh, in my bachelor's. So it was difficult, but I, I kept on uh, doing because I liked it too much. And I was very, very inclined to switch my field and get a job into uh, automotive and uh, Fortunately, after 2018, like after searching for approximately like for 30, 40 days, uh, I got an opportunity with Toyota Motors North America. So that's when I moved from Michigan to Texas uh, because the Toyota Motors headquarters is in Texas, Dallas, Texas. 
and from then from 2018 i've been here in texas and uh, working with toyota motors uh and yeah so far so good it is it is going amazing uh it is not that uh you know i i focused only on academics or only on studies in the in my masters as well it was nothing like that uh we have uh, you know every every us college uh, for that matter has different associations like an indian students association is different because there are few indians then there are few africans there are few iranian students uh, there are few japanese students and few chinese students so so all of these different cultural students and have their own organizations so of course i was a part of the indian students association or in michigan tech uh in the first year i was the fundraiser for the association in my next year i was the president uh, for the association so two years uh, went that way and we organized great many festivals diwali night holi night uh, organized some plays uh dramas did fundraising learned a lot uh you know different aspects talking to people uh how how does dollar work uh what exactly to keep in mind uh different experiences in us uh by the way michigan technological university which uh, you can you can definitely find it later on but it is in the upper peninsula of michigan and it is known as the snowiest college in us so in approximately 12 months of of the year michigan tech has more than 7 months of snow and when i mean means no it is not like an inch of snow in in the entire season we receive around 340 to 350 inches of snow so you can imagine uh, people who are staying on the ground floor here uh, outside their windows there are just mountains and mountains and piles of snow and nothing else for the 6 months it's very very chilly the lowest temperatures recorded are something like minus 60 fahrenheit so it's it's literally bone chilling spine chilling and uh, of course there are shuttles which take us from our housing to the university and back but of they are they are not that frequent and if you miss a shuttle then you have to attend a lecture so you have to run approximately 1 mile in that snow with no shoes with 2 2 3 3 layers of clothes and bag uh, and and that was again a unique and different experience in itself uh, i enjoyed a lot i did uh, as many things as i can and here i am okay so the next question is how academics has helped you to reach this position sorry can you can you uh, please repeat so, yeah what was the role of academics for you in the to reaching this position uh academics of course uh so in my bachelor's uh, of course you also have those subjects control systems one control systems two uh design of machines was one of my favorite subjects uh and uh these three subjects i definitely remember i will i will never brag about i i have also had atkts okay uh, not a lot but not very less also uh, i have had atkts uh, my share of them and uh, but but these three were were some of my favorite subjects and i never got a kt in them i really liked them i studied them well i pursued them and uh, those are the subjects and then the extension of them which i learned in my masters uh, really really help me hone the skill set that i possess today that is uh, used in in my job at toyota motors so uh, academics definitely definitely has a huge role to play if you want to do something in an industry which uh, is based on science so may that be biotechnological uh, industry may that be medical devices industry uh, may that be oil and gas may that be uh, automotive of course may that be power systems may that be mechanical engineering uh, making cars making parts for cars literally just designing parts for cars designing the headlight of a car anything and everything that you might want to do which is related to science unless until you want to go into something like financial engineering or something like that uh, academics is something which is definitely definitely important and as i said in the beginning uh hands on academics is more important uh apart from just reading books so just remembering the drawings or diagrams and and just remembering uh, how does a flywheel work 
or or how is it, does a stepper motor work is is not going to get you anywhere you need to actually take a stepper motor understand even even open it for that matter understand the gears understand uh, plus minus everything and then when you really know how a motor works and how the windings are and how the current flows that is when you will really really be interested in it and if you want your career to be in technological uh, sector then uh, academics is the way to go no doubt about it but but hands on academics definitely yeah what do you think about the college after all these years and have you visited the college recently uh so i came to us in 2016 and uh, after that i visited india once in 2017 after one and a half years at uh, that time i had come to college uh illa sir had invited me to uh, talk to the third year and fourth year students at that time and i i missed college i have always missed college so i came at that time but after that after 2017 i have not come to india at all so i miss my family a lot but i have not been able to see them from for almost 4 years now and that is why i have not uh, been able to come to college but the next time i am there uh, which is going to be sometime in 2022 i am definitely definitely going to visit the college i keep on seeing pictures i think it has changed a bit uh, new statues new lawns uh, new parking and and everything but of course the building remains the same and and i remember everything that we do used to do at different spots in the building and, and i really miss it what role has college played in setting up your career uh, i am what i am because uh, like in, even in my career i am i what i am because of my college because of the teachers because of professors and because of everything that i learned with and without academics so leadership skills time management skills something that they don't teach you in classrooms uh financial management uh, we used to uh, i i remember in the first year when we were uh, managing alacrity right and we were organizing alacrity i was the treasurer for the alacrity event and uh, you know the money that we get like 10 and 20 and 30 rupees that we collect from different colleges for the receipts and for different uh, events and participation in that uh, so we used to collect all those money used to count and tally the receipts uh, there was a ledger uh, i never thought i would be doing accounting in college but at the end of like the 20 25 days of all that uh, collecting of money we had like i think around 1 1.2 lakh rupees and that was the first time i saw that much cash and and imagine 1 1 lakh rupee in Like fifty rupee notes, hundred rupee notes, twenty rupees not, not not even like one single bundle. So it was it was really really amazing. It, it it taught me a lot about finances. It taught me a lot about time management. What is important, what is not. It taught me a lot about priorities. Uh, we all wanted to do a lot of things. We all want to do a lot of things in life always, but priorities is very very important. And what should come first and what should come next. is is something that is going to make your or life or break your life at that particular moment so uh many of you think okay uh, as soon as i get first class or as soon as i get distinction i should get a new bike or or maybe you know uh, as soon as i complete my engineering and start my job i'm going to get a new car uh and and those are not bad dreams at all but but you should you know maybe ask yourself that is this really what i want right now is this really something that is going to help me build up my future uh and and of course to each is own uh, different people have different priorities uh, based on their background based on their status etc etc so um but yeah priorities is something that you would definitely not learn in sitting in your classrooms and through books so learn about finance uh learn about what the world is uh we used to go in zuna bazaar we used to go in uh lakdi bazaar and and bargain for sticks and what not for the lakdi event and and all that now i now that i look at it all that really really taught me a lot which books would not have taught me so 
academics is definitely important i i am i am always for academics uh, till now i have done one bachelor's two masters i have also done an mba when i was uh, working in india but right now i think uh, in in the next semester or in the in a six month period i think i'm going to go for my next masters so learning is very important always keep on learning the more you learn the better but apart from learning from books what you need, really need to learn is through hands on experience and, and go out there in the world do what you want to do and and learn through that yeah how did you build your network amongst the professionals uh network in so back in india i think uh, uh through professors and and then uh, we had again so alacrity and zenith were also two platforms that helped me build my network sometimes it was just a mere fruit seller or a dosa wala or or a samosa wala but sometimes there were people who uh, who used to run pcb designing workshops or who used to uh have um uh you know component designs who use uh, companies like manisha transformers etc etc so, so we uh, wherever we used to go for industrial visits we used to also target them and uh, try to raise some funds from there for from them for alacrity and zenith and and that is how you you meet people you talk nicely to them you tell them that why they are and why their product is going to be important to you and that way you increase your professional network uh, after coming into us uh, of course linkedin is one of the most important platforms that you will ever encounter uh, in india people don't really focus too much on it but it is really really important uh, you can just send random connections to people also and it is not like facebook and people will definitely definitely accept your connections so for just a general example right uh, when i was working in toyota uh, and of course after 2 years 3 years you start thinking okay let's let's switch the job let's go to a different company let's try to you know search more do more so i want to work in rivian and tesla so all the people who had tesla in their job description or who had tesla in and and rivian in their previous experiences i just used to randomly send them connection request and the people who accepted my connection request i randomly used to start talking to them thank you for accepting the connection so what do you do what is your role in your company uh, what product or what part of the product do you focus on and people tell you people are very happy to share the knowledge uh, some of the people may or may not but most of the people most of the technical people are very very happy to share the knowledge so just send requests on linkedin uh, talk to them about even if you ask them their your career advice or you tell them that okay i'm working right now but i want to get back to studies what would you suggest and they will definitely give you their opinion or or they will definitely tell you what they know or or what they have heard one of their friends to one of their colleagues to and how he was successful etc etc so it's always good to uh, talk to more people network with more people uh no more and more and and that information base that you collect at the end of the day that is what is going to help you in life okay are you free shantan to continue from here thank you sharif uh, uh how did uh, ai ss ms iit help you prepare for your first year um, how did ai ss ms help me with my what for year with my career i think i already i already answered that uh, yeah uh, as i said as i said i am what i am today because of what i learned in my college academic and non academic so yeah i, I just answered that okay uh, which of your personal traits and professional skills helped you the most in your career path or in social life so uh from a skill set perspective uh, i would definitely uh, you know request or suggest everyone this one thing uh, a lot of time electrical engineers what they think is that okay what we are going to do we are going to do power systems that means generation transmission distribution that just has to do with maybe relays voltages currents 
equations, mathematical calculations, and, and that's it. And once we set up the relay settings, or once we know what's going to be the SAG of that transmission line, et cetera, et cetera, we are done. But no, it is not that. When you come to US, you definitely understand that electrical engineering is way more than all of that. So even if you are electrical engineers, I would definitely recommend learn any computer language. Learn C, C++, or learn Python, or learn Java. Uh, it is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, trust me, I had to learn that in my master's because uh, even for automotive controls and even for power systems, we had to use MATLAB a lot. And MATLAB, we had to code everything. And I had to let, like literally start from learning what are the syntaxes that I use in those MATLAB sentences and codes to complete my code. So it took me almost 1.5 times more or twice the, the time that a usual American bachelor student takes to write that code because he has been learning MATLAB right from his first year of his engineering or bachelor's. So learn coding. Don't think that electrical engineers do not require coding. It is really, really important if at all you want to pursue and career into something like that. Even if you are in power systems and you know coding, trust me, the more you know about power electronics into power systems as well, you are going to be having a much higher edge, upper edge than, than the normal power systems engineers out there. So learn coding, uh, have that skill set. And uh, apart from that, yeah, learn, learn a lot of social skills because uh, the way you treat people, the same in the same way they will treat you. So treat everyone, uh, treat your professionals with respect. Uh, try to ask them a lot of questions, uh, technical, non-technical, they will definitely give you good advices. And at, at, after a certain point, you can make out what is a good advice, what is a bad advice, uh, and, and just take it from there. That was an impressive answer. Uh, then uh, with respect to current market requirements, what do you think in which area students should upgrade themselves? Sorry, can, can you, uh, I think there is some kind of uh, connection lag from your side, I'm, I'm not able to hear the, the last part of the question properly. Okay, um, I'll repeat the question. Yeah. With respect to current market requirement, what mm -hmm. do you think in which area students should upgrade themselves? So, <laughs> this, is, this is, I don't know, this is funny maybe, but uh, I, I won't say this is market requirement because such things are never market requirement, but uh, if you want to earn money very quickly, uh, become a TikToker man. <laughs> what can I say? Because because TikTok and YouTube are something which are like going far and beyond in every single thing. And, and trust me, TikTok need not be just dance and music. Uh, TikTok need not be repeating some movie film dialogues. TikTok need not be something like, oh, your Punjabi accent is so funny. Oh, your Assamese accent is so funny. No, TikTok is not that. I follow a couple of uh, Instagram accounts where they make TikTok videos about electrical engineering stuff. So basically, I am I am a, a huge biker at heart. I had a very good bike back in India. I had a, a KTM RC 200. And right now, just a couple of months back, I got one of my dream bikes, which I had already also seen in India. So right now I have a Kawasaki Z1000. It's a 1000cc bike and I love riding it. And uh, I keep on, you know, experimenting and doing my own stuff. So whatever the basic package comes, I, I, I recently changed the exhaust to Akrapovich. Next, I'm going to uh, install Brembo brakes, brakes uh, on the bike. And all this I do myself. So I follow some TikTok channels and YouTube channels where they teach you how to do this. So the, there is so much information out there which is so interesting instead of just reading manuals and, and going back to you know the dealer and asking him to do it. But if you do it on your own, it's going to be such a huge learning and it's going to be so much fun. Trust me, uh, I know one of my friends, he got a very very normal car, okay, like a, uh, a four-cylinder inline Subaru, but 
he himself uh, installed a twin turbo charger on his engine and right now his car is like uh, it's it's street illegal if you know what i mean it it is not street legal anymore because it's picked up and its speed uh, it's it's so much more than the normal cars over here that uh, the exhaust it it literally you know you can see flames coming out of the exhaust pipe because he has uh, installed nitro boosters and everything and he all that he did it in his garage by going wrong by learning again and again so for current market trends some things are never going to be you know old mechanical electrical engineering everything that you do right now needs power so power system is never going to be old they are always going to re require power system engineers so that is definitely definitely uh, something if you want to pursue uh, that is always going to be evergreen it may get saturated after a point it may get repetitive but it will never go away uh, start focusing on renew renewable energy more and more if you want to get into power systems if you want to get into embedded systems uh, vehicles because in nowadays in everything there is automation and for automation you require coding so it can be c c++ python coding for uh, power electronics and embedded systems or it can be plc coding ladder logic and everything one of my friends uh, from the same from, from our college only actually he was from the electronics department uh, vikrant acharya uh, he's a very good friend of mine he stays like just five above five hours away from me in arkansas and he works for saint gobain as an automation engineer and he single handedly uh, handles an entire factory which has more than 300 3200 plcs installed in it so at any given point even a single plc goes wrong the conveyor belts and and the entire manufacturing process stops so he has to be always hands on and and he keeps on doing all his preventive maintenances on every single weekend uh, it it's very difficult to even meet him meet him nowadays because he's always busy on weekend also so yeah market trends whatever interests you if tiktok and youtube interests you please do that there is nothing wrong in doing anything uh but don't don't expect uh, that you will just you know uh, say some movie dialogues or or uh, learn some dance in a couple of years and and do dance moves and earn a lot that may get you like a bit far 2 3 years but that's never going to last in the long run so if you want to last in the long run hone some skills learn photography learn photo editing learn digital marketing uh uh learn uh video marketing for amazon and amazon will pay you like anything like they'll pay you more than any person out there in india but yeah skill set is is very very important the next question is uh, what do you think uh, how will higher education in abroad help in career path can you please brief us about higher studies preparation and process so higher education higher education abroad uh one good thing about the higher education year is uh, they give you less assignments but they give you more projects so i remember like there there are times when we don't come out of the library for straight four four days we are just there continuously ordering dominos pizza and and just sitting there and and working on our codes working on our projects making that code run uh my one of my uh one of the papers which i wanted to publish for uh a power system course which i had taken in masters was ordinal optimization of uh, the hysteresis of the of the third harmonic of of the curve and and it was so difficult it was so 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 difficult but we challenged ourselves uh, we wanted to push out the boundaries even the professors actually they they told us that you should not have chosen chosen this because there are people in caltech uh, still working on this and and no one knows the answer but we just wanted to you know try our luck and of course we could not finish it it was it was very very difficult but we finished like i think 
one third part of it and whatever we finished and we presented the professors were so happy and we were so happy with ourselves so uh, one good thing about higher education in us is you get to learn a lot of things practically you directly get to talk with industry experts uh, so career fairs in india and career fairs in us are very different uh, career fairs in us are like basically uh, you guys are going to mela right like even if it's a food mela or even if it's uh, like a normal mela in mela what you do you go to a particular stall and you play the game or you go to a particular shop and you and you eat the food so similarly in us you stand in line and there is a come in stall there is a lido stall there is black and wheat stall there is a tesla stall there is rivian stall all these different automotive companies electrical companies automation companies uh, uh, chemical engineering companies biomedical engineering companies you go to their stalls and they invite you like they are actually they are handing out pamphlets about their company they want to hire you all you have to do is crack your first impression on that stall then they give you a time for an on site interview uh, sorry uh, for on campus interview the next day and if you are selected in the on campus interview then they give you a third on site interview where they check all your technical skills are you a good team player or not how are you good with deadlines uh, how are you with your uh, how strong are you uh, with your technical skills are you a subject matter expert in what they require so in india is completely different right in india it's it's a written exam uh, maybe now things have changed I, in the last 5 years i don't know much about it but a written exam and we always focus on focus on technical skills but here it is not that way uh i remember i got rejected in an on site interview usually that never happens okay and i'm very kind of embarrassed to say this story also but uh, i got rejected in an on site interview just because they were discussing a bit about cats and dogs and i did not have have any information to you know contribute to that topic so i just was sitting there on the table listening to them and uh at the end, end of the day they just figured figured that you know on friday if we take this guy to drink a beer he is going to be a he is going to be a boring person he is not going to be a team player so even if i passed my technical round they still did not hire me because they found me to be a person who does not involve himself in conversations whereas in general i talk a lot <laughs> as you can see but but there was a, a topic which i did not know anything about and i did not talk so i did not get selected so the skill set requirement here and in india is kind of very different so that's something good that to you get to learn here and then uh, like everything is very easily accessible here that's that's one good thing there's a public li library just one minute one two minutes walking from my house you can just open a card for free and you can get any single book in the entire world that you want if you don't if they don't have it over there you just have to write your name and the name of the book you want and they will get it for you within 5 to 7 business days that's their commitment and it's a free library imagine so they spend money on getting that book to you just because you want to read it so so accessibility is way much more in us or in germany for that matter in canada as compared to that in india that's that's what i think so that's why i think this experience uh, teaches you a lot of things in a different way and of course like if i would have come here for bachelors i would have been a different person something like that uh, uh, to say about this uh, it's really nice uh, and uh, we uh, we all know that you are an active alumnus of our college from electrical department but we would like to hear from you uh, about this Sorry, you would like to hear what? Uh, we all know that you are an active alumnus of our college, but we would like to hear from you all about. So, active alumnus. Uh, I mean, I I keep on talking to Sheila sir. Every now and then, we have a lot of different discussions. Uh, he uh, tells me things about what's going on in the department what's going on in the education sector 
and industrial visits and guest lectures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's it's really fun to hear that. Uh, but as I said, I've I've not been able to even visit India or visit my home for for the last four years. So I am maybe not that active as much as I would have liked to be. Uh, but definitely in the future, whenever I, I uh, visit India, visit India next, uh, I will definitely make it a point to visit college, and and then onwards, I'll, I'll definitely be more active than I am right now. Okay, uh, now I hand over the Q and A session to Rituja. Rituja, continue. Thank you, Shantanu. Uh, so, you already said, you already told us about your contribution towards IOIT. Like you introduced the alacrity and cultural cut and all that. But what about in future? What will be your contribution towards AISSMS as an alumni? Uh, like being being very far from college physically, um, I will have to think how I can contribute better. But uh, I think uh, if if like some of you uh, want to have like a one on one session with me later on just to just to understand more about things, right? Uh, it may that be a student of any department, I, it does not matter. It does not need to be only electrical department. I can I can definitely make time like uh, one hour or two hours in a couple of weeks and maybe uh, council students, if they want to do MS in US, I can guide them. Uh, even if they want to pursue a, a different career path than what they are learning right now, I can uh, put some light on that. Uh, that can be done as, a, as an active alumnus. Uh, I would, I, if I was there in uh, Pune or if I was there in India, I would have definitely visited college more and maybe even you know, started workshops or lecture series or something like that, and uh, done more. But uh, for now, I I'm, I left to think what what else I can do as as actively as I can. So, would you like to enlighten the students about about anything about this field, about future studies? Sure, 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 sure. Um, uh, as I said, like be good at something. That that's that's the bottom line. Be be good at anything you want. It it's not necessarily that okay, you 60, 70, 80 students are electrical engineers, so you all have to go and enroll into Reliance Power or go and work into MSCB only. No, it is not like that at all. You know, in India, uh, usually they say that people do engineering to actually figure out what they want to do in life. But that should not be the case. Ideally, uh, you should uh, by by the time you reach your 10, 12 standard, or maybe do your three year bachelor's degree, uh, you should be able to you know think straight and figure out what is your liking and focus on that. Even if even if you like, for example, if you like dance, dance. There, there is no one and nothing that can stop you because I know a person. Uh, he is the he's the elder brother of uh, one of my classmates, which was in bachelor's. So Sai Prasad Dulal, he was my classmate in in bachelor's electrical engineering, and his elder brother. Uh, he completed his engineering. Uh, after that, he worked in Zensar Karadi for two years. After that, he opened his own company and he started getting. Uh, software projects from clients in US and UK and uh, while doing that he moved to US and eventually to Canada and can in when he moved to US and Canada he uh, just joined the dance dance group like right? he wanted to learn salsa and bachata and now he he just goes with his salsa group tours the world and dances and earns money through that so just just know what you really like and focus on that work hard there is there is no alternative to work hard working hard guys there is no alternative mehnat hi sab kuch hai 
but you can work hard in anything you can work hard in in personality development you can work hard on academics you can work hard on speaking very well uh, and and yeah okay so now let's talk about current situation like what okay. do you think about this pandemic and situation in it sector like work from home is suitable or hectic according to you uh there are there, so there are both pros and cons to it like right now i am working from home for almost one and a half years and because of that what happens is uh, when i used to go to office it was a very simple like some companies obviously if the role is demanding you have to put in more hours in, even in us there is no doubt but in my company there was a very specific timeline of the entire project three years one product we have to launch one project it is there it's a long project so you reach the office by 8:45 9 you leave by 5 5:15 and that's it no one emails you after that because people really respect your privacy and your personal time as well so no one emails you no one calls you etc etc but now what has happened is uh, i know my office or or my stand up call is at 9 o'clock but i still have to be in front of my laptop at 7:45 eight because because i start getting messages of people who want something from me uh because i work in toyota so sometimes we have calls from japan also which is like the parent toyota company toyota motor corporation so they those guys get up way early in their day and we have to like stay late in our business day to have meetings and calls with them so even if my office ideally uh, needs to end at 5 it goes on until 7:30 8:30 9 uh and it is it gets really really hectic so uh, because our managers and everyone thinks that you know you are sitting in the comfort of your home so what else you have got to do you can work more so the work times has def- have definitely increased they are not 8 hours anymore and uh, one thing i would definitely like to mention here that uh, one big difference in the work culture of you know the foreign countries including us canada germany australia and then the working culture of india even in it sector is that uh, if you go cape gemini infosys uh, or, or any other it company you take sutta break you take two three chai breaks you take lunch breaks you take breakfast breaks in in the middle of your work day okay and and you just you take gossip breaks and etc etc and, and the work that you could have done in 5 hours you stretch and stretch and stretch and you do that in 3 days that's the work culture of india which is not good at all but when when i mean that i work from 8 to 5 i literally work continuously from 8 to 5 like today i had about 12 meetings some of them half an hours some of them one hour and when you actively participate in a meeting you have to speak up if someone ask you ask you a question and if you cannot answer it it's a very bad impression on your part and if that happens two three times they'll directly fire you so it's it's a very demanding job that's why people here spend less time people here sometimes just work 6 hours but when i say they work 6 hours they literally only work and do nothing else at all so so that that way you know life life is different and pandemic has changed a lot i keep on working 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 uh, it is right now 12 30 am like i am i usually go to sleep by 10 because i wake up by 5 but it's 12:30 am today and uh, tomorrow i have work at 8 again so but it is what it is there are, there are some perks once in a while if if i don't have meetings uh, i just go for a run for an hour and and no one says anything because my tasks are completed so 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 there are some perks i sometimes i make fresh, fresh food and i don't have to eat something which is kept in the fridge so i get up at 11:30 make my own food quickly have lunch nicely and then get back to my laptop at 1 because i don't have particular meetings so there are ups and downs to this work from home thing uh, but overall it it is just increased a lot of work on me man personally 
actually we need to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule so thanks for that no, that's just fine i am i am always i am always very interested to talk to students uh, there are there are some of uh, some of the students or some of my friends and their younger brothers and we keep on having these calls sometimes uh, I, I take these calls early morning at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. and then it's evening there in India, so I keep on talking to them. Sometimes I, I stay awake late at night. It, it's perfectly fine. I, I love doing this, so no no problem. So moving on to next, uh, you told us about your role in alacrity and extracurricular activities. So what's your best memory about it? One memory that you would never forget. There, there are a lot of funny memories, definitely. Uh, we used to sleep in college. We, we used to we used to just sleep in college. We used to sleep in the multipurpose hall. We used to work till 1, 2 a.m. at night, doing accounts, managing things, planning things specifically. How will this happen? How will that happen? Or what should we do about this? What should we do about that space? How, where should we put stalls, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, sometimes it was easier to get people come in and install things after 11 p.m. because that time they could do it faster. So we used to stay in college. We used to uh, uh, rehearse for, for theater in college. And, and it's not that, you know, I've stopped it right now. So because just uh, two days before I auditioned for a Marathi play over here, which we are going to present in Michigan, uh, I think in three months time. So, uh, and, and they have selected me uh, as an actor, so I don't know. Uh, the scripting and all will start now. So whatever I used to do back in Pune, the things that I've always liked, uh, Marathi theater, poetry, uh, in addition to academics, of course, I, I do it here as well. Uh, and it's, and it's, I, I miss all the all the things in college that I do. I really miss them. I, I miss my friend circle a lot. I miss, I miss sitting on the steps and eating Auntie ke hat ki khichdi and pohe and all that. So, last question from my side. Uh, how was your experience while doing final year project? Uh, it was. It was very dramatic for for some of us. I will I will definitely say this. Uh, we were we were actually. Uh, some of the lucky ones to have uh, gotten an opportunity to work with uh, a company known as Bhasha Technologies, and they had sponsored our project. And uh, the the owners of Bhasha Technologies were like really brilliant people, very very knowledgeable and everything. Uh, but I think the projects were kind of very difficult, so we could not complete them during the entire year. And just at the last moment, as in uh, two months before the finals, we had to completely change our project. And then me and my project partner, we did something else. And there was other group also. They also did some other projects. But uh, it was it was a lot of learning, I will say. And and we learned the importance of time and, and starting things on time so that we could end them on time. But our projects at the end went very well. I think I have uh, in my batch, I have uh, second highest marks in, in project at least because my project went very, very well. We worked a, very hard in the last two months and we got that uh, robot that we made working and it did exactly what it was supposed to do in front of the external examiner and we are very thankful for that. So it was, it was a fun project, man. But projects are very important. Projects is what will actually teach you or actually show you what you have learned in the in the first four years of engineering so project project is something that you can uh, when you get your mark sheet in your hand project you look at your project you look at your mark sheet and then you can actually you know pat on your back here engineering kia you know something like that thank you now, Sujata ma'am will be asking some more questions on behalf of all the faculty members. Hello, Anitya. Hello. I hope, uh, yeah, it's midnight over there. So thank you for sparing time. 
uh, I have two questions. That is a uh, role of self motivation and self learning in this era because uh, technologies are updating each and every second and moment. So uh, yeah. everything teachers cannot uh, like make spoon feeding and all those things. So can you throw some light on this self motivation and self learning? Definitely, definitely. Uh, like at this point also, even if you ask me, uh, I think. I am very, 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 very motivated to do a lot of things. Like in October, in September, I am going for a four day trip uh, to hike one of the highest mountains. In October, I am organizing a bike ride for 1000 miles, which is approximately 1600 kilometers in a single day. Uh, uh, every December, I plan to have a 14 day road trip across various states in US. Uh, and every single year, I make it a point that I learn something new. Definitely, that that has to be. May that be, you know, uh, something, some some technique to cook food because I love cooking. Uh, some new technique to, uh, which is going to be useful in my career. Uh, I want to do PMP certification, which is a project management professional certification, which is globally accepted. Uh, so that is something I will start working on right now. And I'm also going to start, uh, you know, uh, preparing towards my next master. So uh, my parents have not asked me to do this. Uh, they already think I, I, I've studied enough. Uh, and my friends have not asked me to do this. But uh, there are a couple of friends of mine who are like postdocs and all. and uh, even if I do or do not compare to them, I always keep on thinking that if you are the smartest guy in the room, you will always have job. May that job be, you know, you working for someone or someone working for you, but your mind will never be idle. And, and that is what I think is very, very important. So I think self-motivation is the key. Uh, even if you have to build a very good physique, uh, if if some of these people do go to gyms, they know that even if other people force you, it is you who will have to you know do that cardio exercise or or lift up uh, lift up those uh, dumbbells, and then only you will get into shape. So self motivation is the key to everything. If you don't have self motivation, no matter what whoever tells you, you are not going to be able to do anything. So and again, as I said. If you have self motivation in academics, awesome, a thing like it. But it is not necessary that you just have that in academics only. It can be about anything. Uh, I am learning chess right now. I, I mean, I, I always knew chess. I was kind of a good player. I re represented IOIT in playing chess and I won for IOIT also. But now I'm learning this chess by Bobby Fisher and I keep on. Uh, solving his riddles and puzzles because I I want to get a rated player till uh, 2023. So that's also one of my goals, which I keep on doing parallelly. And, and obviously no one has asked me to, but I I want to and I love it. And that's all because of self-motivation. Rituja, you can proceed with the second round. Thank you, ma'am. So now let's just light up the mood. So as the adage goes, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So mm -hmm. we have also included a rapid fire round for our guests. So I request Mr. Aniket to get ready for some rapid questions. Cool, cool. First, three things which you missed in college life. Okay, uh, I miss not having a girlfriend in college life. Uh, I missed getting a distinction ever. I, I never got a distinction. Uh, it's embarrassing, but yeah, I, I do miss that. I think at least for one semester, if I would have got it, would have been amazing. And third thing is, uh, There is, there is there is no other thing. I I did as much as I could and and, and I did not miss out on anything. But yeah, these two things I I didn't miss out on. 
teachers which you admire the most? Uh, there are there are all the teachers. Like uh, I'm and I'm, I'm not uh, you know trying to be diplomatic at all. Um, all the teachers have definitely tried to teach me what they were best at, and I, I tried to learn from all of them. But yeah, my most two favorite teachers are SM Saudari and Sheila sir. And and hats off to them. It is what we are today because of them. What are the domains or skills students should explore on their own? Coding. Coding, finances. Never let go of this because there is not a single person out there who is going to sit you down on a chair and teach you these things. Money management is one of the most important skills that you should acquire right from when you are a child. Open a bank account when you are in eighth standard. Ask your friend to do it for his younger sister. You do it for your younger sister and brother and ask them to write a check, deposit a check, fill out a black bank slip. Uh, ex ex sorry, explain to them what is stock market, explain to them what is cryptocurrency. You learn about cryptocurrency. No one teaches you financial management and trust me, by the time you learn it, it is already very late. So investment, financial management are the most important skills that everyone should learn. Even if you are an engineer or not an engineer, it does not matter. Three subjects which you studied the best. Uh, I loved uh, engineering drawing. I got one of the highest marks in engineering drawing. I, I'm I'm very good at, at drawing. I always love to do painting, sketches, drawings. So engineering drawing, uh, I loved uh, them design of machines. I loved it and control systems. So on a scale of one to 10, how excited you are about your life right now? I am hunted. Like, like literally right now I am at hunted because I want to do so many things and I keep on thinking that yaar, kitna kam time hai yaar. like I sometimes I think like 24 hours are less because I really, really want to do so many things parallelly and then I really don't get time to do them. So. I, I'm very excited. I'm always full of life. I'm always very excited about life. Last book you read, like novel and all. Uh, and last book, last book outside of, okay. I think I have it here or maybe I've given it to my friend. But uh, right now I'm reading two books from Shashi Tharoor. One I've given to my friend. Uh, that was, I think, uh, An Inglorious Empire. That was by Shashi Tharoor. The second book is this, by again Shashi Tharoor, An Era of Darkness. And the third book is, again by Shashi Tharoor, uh, Why I Am a Hindu. So I, 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 I like to read uh, on different topics, different subjects, uh, and I don't like I've given up on reading on fiction. I've, I've come out of that era of Chetan Bhagat and, and, and stupid people writing stupid, stupid love stories about teenagers. Uh, I'm, I'm more into history, financial knowledge, investment, banking, uh, of course, technical stuff. Uh, and I'm also doing my PMP preparation. So that's one of the books and chess, of course. What was the first line to family because of college life? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this in Marathi uh, because I think that way it will be more genuine and, and funny maybe. But uh, whenever my, my mom or my dad used to ask me, Aniket, abhyas karto is na? Hawaii, karto hai gavi, khub abhyas karto hai, mei tu kai kaji karna? Which was, which was definitely a lie. I was not studying as much as I should have, but uh, it is what it is. What is your priority? Knowledge or money? Knowledge. Absolutely no doubt about it. Because 
with knowledge only you can earn money even if you have money with knowledge only you can double it or else you lose all the money that's why i'm saying like even if you have a skill set or not you should definitely definitely learn about financial management absolute knowledge always most memorable moment of college life everything uh, doing firodia karandak purushottam karandak suman karandak doing participating organizing alacrity events uh a couple of fights only a couple of fights i think which i was a part of once in the foreground once in the background uh, usually iot uh, did not really see any fights as such but there were a couple of instances so that was that I had my fair share of that as well and then yeah just 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 doing tp with friends man because once you get into job that tp with friends never happens even if it's a weekend you always have a goal yaar nahi nahi ye movie dekhna hai kyunki fir pura hafta time nahi milega aur nahi 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 yaar us restaurant mein ja ke aana tha weekend koi time hai pura hafta time nahi milega to you always have something to look forward to you never just you know sit down and relax and chill with your friends which we used to do a lot in in my college life so that's one thing i miss How often you bunk be college? Uh, <laughs> so there are there are two parts to it. Okay, I've I've never bunked college. As in, I've never uh, bunked college and then went out on trips to Murshi, Lonavara, Khandara, this that place. Never, never. But but I was always in college. But yes, I've bunked a lot of lectures. and a lot of lectures of for, for all this you know organizing events and this and that only nothing nothing just time pass wise but yeah i i've never bunk college but i bunked a lot of like more more than 60% of lectures i bunked i'm not very proud to say it but i'm just saying like i'm not saying you should do it or if even if you're doing it do it for a good reason man that's it So what was the, what was your first reaction when teachers would ask you for assignments or submissions? Any reaction, okay? Look, uh, so, so except for Shingare sir's assignment, I don't think uh, any other assignment was ever incomplete from my side. I I always did all my assignments on time, so I was ne- never really you know scared about them. But but Shingare sir's assignments were too lengthy and and they were just too lengthy, man. I, they, no one could finish it on time. So uh, we were just scared if if he would cut our practical marks or something like that, or or delay our submissions or whatever. Uh, what was your favorite place in the college? Steps, steps in front of the college, and 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 also. the oat as in back steps or front steps but yeah those that's like we used to just sit there and and do everything eat tiffin plan things fight uh, do mimicry of each other uh, do assignments there sometimes steps i i miss those those steps man last question for this round which teacher has encouraged you the most like in both fields अनिक There is one question from the stu- group of students. Uh, we are group of students who are looking for higher education. Can you help us? How can we connect with you? Uh, you can always find me on LinkedIn. Uh, my full name is Aniket Samir. 
A N I K E T S A M E L. Uh, you can connect to me there and you can ask me questions. Uh, there have been students who have uh, sent me friend request on Facebook, but uh, Facebook I think is is more of a friends kind of thing. I think so. Usually I don't accept requests of the people I don't know. But uh, as I said, LinkedIn is a different platform. LinkedIn is for networking for professionals. So if you definitely want to ask me questions or uh, even, you know, uh, I can, I can, once you connect with me on LinkedIn, I can also share my phone number and then we can talk on WhatsApp also. That's, that's fine. You can call me then. Hello? Yes. Uh, yeah, so I saw your LinkedIn and your, uh, like it's written over there that navigating fiercely towards uh, autonomy. Like, correct the story behind it. So, uh, the, there, there is no story as such, but uh, the thing is, uh, so right now, I, I don't know uh, how many people uh, or, or how many of your parents or, or whosoever like own really, really good cars, like high end cars. I don't know that, but uh this features uh, are like started coming in india i think from 2018 or 2019 onwards so if we, everyone so everyone knows the dashboard of a car right uh, there is a steering wheel there is a screen behind the steering wheel and then there is an entertainment system in the middle of the car and then to the left side there is the glove box or glove compartment so now uh, going forward, uh, that that entertainment system, which uh, usually used to have a lot of buttons and everything, and just maybe a CD player or a cassette player, that is slowly and uh, slowly changing into screens like our mobile phones. So now you have Apple CarPlay, and you can see Google Maps while navigating on the screen and everything. So that screen is known as a head unit for the car, and then the screen that you have, which shows you your speed, your mileage. Uh, your RPM indicator, etc., which is behind your steering wheel, that's known as the cluster of the car. So what I do for Toyota as an embedded engineer is I design and develop the head unit and the cluster and have them work with sync. So all the sensors that you have in uh, your cars, even if it's the temperature sensors which uh, control your air conditioning inside the car, or even if it's uh, LiDAR, radar, uh, whatever sensors you have in your car, outside, inside, all those, they have settings on the head unit and the interface of the head unit. And I most probably specifically work in designing an inbuilt navigation system for Toyota and Lexus cars. So by the way, Lexus is the premium brand for Toyota. So Toyota and Lexus is kind of the same thing. So I, I work in that particular field and then, uh, in US particularly, this is happening much, at a much faster rate, but we are moving towards autonomous cars, that is driverless cars. All You all would have definitely heard about Elon Musk, right? So Tesla is right now level three autonomy, which means you can uh, press a button and leave the steering wheel for approximately 20 seconds. You keep, have to keep on nudging it to tell the car that you are also awake, but the car drives on itself. It has nine cameras fitted all around it, and you don't even have to accelerate. You don't have to brake. Even if there's a car coming in front of you and braking, your car will brake automatically. So I want to be definitely a part of this autonomous vehicle revolution. I love autonomous vehicles. Uh, I am working on electric vehicles for Toyota and Lexus as well. So navigating towards autonomy is something like i work in the navigation development department but i'm working towards autonomy so so that's the meaning of that sentence thank you anyone else uh my question is uh you uh, you, uh, you told us earlier that you got plans uh, in next coming months and you got uh, co curricular activities like dramas, and you have your working schedule. So, how you manage your time and work and these all things? Uh, how I manage? Uh, one thing about so, so 
everyone is a different person okay and everyone has as i said different priorities different likes dislikes etc etc but one thing about myself is i i i seldom waste any time i usually don't waste any time like i i don't like keep on scrolling on instagram continuously or facebook or keep on watching the same movies again and again i i am a big fanatic of movies i keep on watching new new movies but then uh that's a that's a part of my entertainment but i am always doing something like either i am either reading or even if as i said i even if i'm on instagram i'll uh, i'll keep on learning about oh this computer hack oh that computer hack oh if you know uh, if you invest this much money in this much uh, uh in in those shares and if you keep them for 5 years then what will happen then i'll go and study about those shares that marketing scheme that financial scheme i'll i'll see into what is a 401k account which company is vanguard uh and uh, roth and schwab and who all can help me reach my financial goals so i'll, I'll always keep on doing something or the other even if i am on instagram so i i just keep on doing stuff continuously like throughout the day so i i seldom waste any time so that that's how i manage and i love traveling like uh, i don't know whether you can see it right now let me see if i can maybe switch my camera for a second uh, i don't know how to do it on webex give me one second Okay. Yeah. So this is my dual camera. Anyway, uh, can you guys see this map? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is the map of US, right? And uh, uh, forget what I put into it. Like this, this bead thing. This is uh, some uh, souvenir that I've got uh, gotten from a festival that I went to. But uh, can you see these red lines on these maps? So yeah. that uh, that yeah that that red sketch pen line basically are all the road trips that I've taken. So sometimes I maybe just you know fly somewhere, meet a couple of friends, see that place, and come back. So that's not exactly a road trip, but all these red lines basically indicate the road trip that I've taken to that particular state and everything. And uh, every every uh, December or whenever I can, I I take road trips, and every weekend I, I keep on doing something. Man, I I I, I, I hate sitting idle, so that is what it is. <laughs> One more question: uh, In your final year, did you get any kind of thought that if you not get placed and all, then what would you do in life? Oh, obviously, I got a lot of thoughts because uh, in my final year, I think we just had. four companies or something uh that that came to the campus and uh, out of that one company had a criteria for 65% aggregate which i did not have so obviously that company was ruled out for me uh and the other uh, two companies i think uh, i definitely gave their interviews uh, got selected for both of them and then out of those two i had a choice to make so i chose night prank thank you sir that was a great experience for you any more questions uh yeah so can you just uh, means give some information about the visas means uh what is the condition of opt as well as after that how many people get selected for h1b visa h1b visa lottery is pure luck like there is not even any computer based algorithm it's literally lottery like there are 4 lakh applications approximately 4 lakh to 4.5 lakh applications for h1b which is work visa every year and out of that uh 1.6 lakh applications 
randomly get picked and selected and if you get picked you're lucky if you don't get picked you wait for your next chance and there are three chances and sir what if we don't get the visa even after three chances and what is the other option oh again let's see if you don't get uh, h1b visa after three chances also then um there are multiple options one you go back to india and do something else which obviously we don't want to do because we have spent a lot we have put a lot of effort to come to us and learn something else so obviously no one wants to go back to india uh, most of the people choose the canada route so they apply for canadian or canadian permanent residency which is known as pr they apply for that there is a point based system and based on that point based system again uh, there is a lottery so every 3 months or every 6 months there is this lottery system which is picked and uh, you are going to be uh, picked for sure but uh, it may be not immediately but in the next lottery so uh, it's it's like you get into a line uh, for canadian canadian pr and then whenever you are picked you submit the paperwork and once you get the pr then you move to canada and stay there for 3 years and try to become a citizen so canada is one of the options uh, going back to india of course is, is the option but that is not what we want another interesting option is uh, finding so when you are on your opt itself in us finding a company over here which is like a global company so there are recruiters also which uh, are global recruiters so right now i have some of my friends working in toyota under that recruiter so if their h1 leader h1b does not get picked up they will just uh, move from here to toyota australia or toyota europe uh, and or toyota canada and the company will take care of all their paper works and visa stuff and etc etc and uh, they will still work for that company as a recruiter and they will move to another countries so that visa will be taken care by them uh, so that's one of the options or else uh, one of the other option is known as day one cpt which is basically getting and en- getting yourself enrolled into another full time masters program not online full time masters program but they allow you day one cpt which means you can continue working for your current employer on cpt visa uh and still get that degree done and after day one cpt you again go through the process of opt stem opt and again three chances for h1b and uh, can we directly come for phd instead of doing masters in us absolutely like- absolutely you can uh, one of my friends uh, she came here for phd specifically because uh, she had completed her me in india and then she was in continuously in contact with one of the professors over here in el paso university in texas and uh, the professor finally after 3 or 6 months of continuous conversations uh, gave her an opportunity to come and work h- under him for phd and obviously phd is paid but it's it's a stipend it's not a full time salary so the stipend is very less uh, and then uh, of course you have to keep on uh you know communicating with different professors from different universities uh in in the field of your interest of course and uh if they have the budget and if they like your proposition of what you want to do uh or what you want to do your phd in and whether it is going to be helpful for their overall research or not based on that you de- you can definitely come here for phd also but phd is a very long shot uh you need to have a lot of accredi- accreditations in in india uh, published a couple of papers uh you have some actual research experience in india that is always a plus which almost none of us have so coming here for phd is a long shot but ideally yes you can
after coming here you have to take like two or three prerequisite courses uh, which are absolutely necessary for that research work and then you can start with your phd uh, and sir, so, last question. Uh, after completing education in European countries, can we come to USA for job opportunities? Yes, you can. But the visa type will be different. Okay, so what is TN1 that visa? visa? It will be TN visa type uh, or H1B visa type again. Uh, or if you are a girl or a woman and if you uh, get married to a person who is working in US, then you can also come on H4 dependent visa and work. Okay, sir. Thank you. Hello, Aniket. Am I audible? Hello, Shila, sir. Yes, yes, you are. Yes, uh, I don't have question, but I want to thank you uh, for uh, motivating all the students, uh, not only for motivating to students, but also motivating to faculty members also. Because, you know, it helps we uh, faculty members as well to see how to look at students from holistic point of view. It's not only one aspect that we need to nurture, but all other things. And uh, you have given a full spectrum uh, and definitely sure that uh, all of us are uh, really motivated and there will be a concentrated efforts from all of you. So thank you all. Uh, for you know having participated in this and uh, basically main thanks to Aniket you know who has uh, you know at the V hours he's uh, talking to us and uh, still fresh and uh, giving uh, all the things taking us on the memory lane from the old, earlier olden days you know as you mentioned I remember Bhasha Technologies and uh, the uh, yeah. uh, Arduino workshop we had started yes 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 of course of course I, I am never going to forget that Yes, yes, yes. So thank you, thank you, Nikit. And uh, I no wish problem, you sir. I'm, for your feedback. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. And I'm always very, very happy to talk to anyone from AISSMS IOIT that has been my home for uh, four years almost. And, and almost most of the things, almost uh, everything that I know right now, apart from the years after that, uh, I, I know from IOIT and I'll always be thankful to that place, that college, my department, my professors for instigating all that they could and we took whatever we could <laughs> and we are where we are. But yeah, I'll, I'll always miss that, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, hello Aniket. Uh, I am Meenal Zope. Uh, I'm a alumni uh, in charge of AIS SMS IOT. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I must say you have an amazing journey from the college life till now. And, and always you are an experiment, experimental person as uh, I have heard you from last one and a half hour. So yes, and uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you Aniket for giving uh, practical knowledge about life and which is always important for uh, the students, for us, for everyone, rather than only having the bookish knowledge. Thank you. Definitely. And yeah, thank no you. Thank you for giving time for your alma mater and your guidance no to problem, the stu no students and sharing your experiments with bike and all. Yes, I, I love that and uh, I like that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you so much. It, yes. it was, I am very glad to have this conversation with all of you. And I request uh, actually uh, in future also uh, you will help us as alumni uh, in every aspect uh, for grooming our students. Definitely, definitely. Yes. I will. I will always be available for for such kind of sessions or anything else. If you have in mind, and we can do it online. Uh, I, I would love to help. Thank you. Thank you, Shila, sir. Thank you, Zope, madam. Yeah, uh, Aniket, it was a really great session, and I hope as a being a voyager, you have traveled down the memory lane, right? Uh, uh, thank you. Definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. I, Sujata Pavnikar, on behalf of Alumni Association AISS MS IOIT, regard this as an honor and great privilege to propose a vote of thanks. I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to Mr. Aniket for delivering inspiring motivational talk. And I'm sure students present here will have a lot to take away from the knowledge sharing session. 
Insights provided by you will help our students to upgrade their skills and excel in their career. Thank you for talking, uh, taking out time from your busy schedule. And despite of the different time zone, like right now, there is al almost one o'clock at night and you are still there for our, uh, your alma mater. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all the members of AISSMS management, media team, principal Dr. P.B. Mani, to provide wonderful platform to get connected with our alumni through this enlightening session. I would like to thank Sasha Madam, Dr. A.D. Shirakar, Head of the Electrical Department, Mrs. Minel Zope, Alumni Coordinator, AISSMS IOIT, for constant support and motivation. I thank all the alumni committee members, faculties, volunteers for their enormous cooperation in organizing this event. Last but not the least, I thank all the students for showing their interest, sparing their time and making this event successful. Once again, thank you everyone. I request everyone to switch on their video for a group photograph. Absolutely. I, I would love to see everyone's faces. This one. Please, please switch on your videos. Okay, thank you, Anike. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. So here I will okay. conclude the session, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it was nice talking to all of you. And uh, if we have some in similar session again, uh, I would I would love to join. No problem. Have a good day to all of you and uh, I will talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.